of Administration MiniConf um, for our fourth presentation in this morning session, if you're in our time zone or afternoon or evening session. Um, we have Der Hans talking to us about um, what system administrators need to know about MySQL. Over to you, Der Hans. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody for uh, showing up for LCA this year. And thanks especially to the organizers who are doing a lot of work to put this on and make this available for us. Uh, I have been a system administrator for uh, just a few years. I've done a lot of other things as well, but always kind of from a system administrator's perspective, currently working as a customer data engineer, working with databases. But again, I'm looking at as a, a lot as a system in and trying to do automation and things like that. Uh, and I have previously been a MySQL DBA. And, oops, wrong device. So I usually have some upcoming presentations. Here's some ways to get a hold of me. I'll try to remember to come back to this later on, or you can ask in chat and get a hold of me. All right. So one of the things with MySQL is it starts with a default prompt that just says MySQL. Doesn't tell you where you are, what you're doing. And for system administrators, we're on different systems all the time. It's really handy to be able to know that. We were used to that in our shell. And this is just really monotonous for us. It's just a lot of the same. So we have a way of fixing that, though. We can set MySQL under one, similar to how we use at the shell. Uh, and here are a couple of examples for that. Um, so we can set user, host, and what database you're talking to. The second example I have there is just showing using shell expansion to go through. I had a, a place I worked at that um, had this machines and data centers all over the world. Know which one you were on, and this is what I was using to tell me which pop. So which was I was I in Sydney? Was I in San Jose? Was I in in Hong Kong? Uh, this was a way for me to 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 see that. Uh, and then now uh, on these examples, I can see that uh, not only, I mean, in this case, it's all root, but I can see which machine I'm in and which database I'm talking to. And the first example, I'm on the LCA machine uh, and I'm not in a database yet. I haven't done use. Uh, so I have, on the second one, I'm on the Sonic Tools machine. I'm in the 13th database. Uh, and then finally on uh, mysql.mel uh, and I'm in the LCA database. So by changing that prompt, it gives me a chance to see where I'm at. It's kind of really important when you're you're shutting down uh, dev to do something. It kind of sucks to find out. Oops, that was prod, right? Or you're in the wrong wrong time zone and so forth. Um, so I think this is for system in perspective. Like I say, we're in and out of stuff all the time. It's handy to have that. Um, but that's cluster SSH hitting three boxes in parallel. You still need two passwords in order to get in um, through normal to setup. But we know how to fix that. We're system ins, so I'll let like, the the open SSH or the SSH to you, uh, because we're that's something we use all the time. Let's talk about MySQL authentication. Now MySQL from the command line, you can give it a username and a password. Um, but the problem is, if the password is on the command line, it can show up in your process list. It can show up in your shell history. It can show up in the MySQL history file as well. And you've got a chance of copying and pasting it. So if you're working with customer tickets or working with dev, right? And you don't want to give dev the, the root password for your MySQL instance. Um, so we don't want to have that on the command line and have a risk of accidentally copying and pasting that. Um, what we can do is just leave the password off and then MySQL prompt us, right? So you give it the username and say dash P. Uh, and it'll then prompt you for the password, but that doesn't give us automatic uh, authentication. Uh, if we're trying to do cron jobs or scripts or we're doing something where we're going in over and over again, um, you don't want to type the password every time you have to do a new command. Um, so what we can do is set the uh, credentials in a text file that MySQL that will then check. By default, it'll check the .my.cnf in your home directory. Uh, if you're got a, a uh, environment where you need to worry about things like we all do because of security remember to check roots myconf as well because you'll find things in there especially if, if devs ever got access to root to uh to root on that machine you'll find all kinds of things squirreled away in there um also on debian um for ease of upgrades it's a really nice system but an etsy mys mysql debian.cnf uh, they will have some credentials in there. Again, if you're wanting to secure stuff, you might want to take those out. You always put them back in when you do the upgrade if you're using package management, but you can take them out so they're not there uh, under normal conditions. Um, 
And then finally, you can use MySQL underbar PWD. So this is a variable you can set with the password in it, and MySQL will then use that when you try to authenticate. Uh, so similar to my.cnf, you can stick this in a text file and then and source it uh, as, as a config file, but it's not just that one file. You can put it in any file, so you can create an RC file or a config file specific for the command that you're trying to run right now. All right. For authorization and privileges, MySQL uses the terms grant and revoke to give privileges or to take them away. Uh, if you're needing to give somebody read access to read only access to your database, then you'll want to give them select. That's all they need for for normal reads. Um, but if you want to give them read write, you actually need to give them four different uh, permission sets. Um, so select, delete, uh, insert, and update. Uh, and you might be able to get away without all four, but generally, if you're wanting them to be able to make changes to your database, they'll need all four of those uh, permissions. Um, now, stored procedures are SQL version of shell scripts that run inside the database. Uh, there is a, a parameter, the SQL security, that you can set, and you can set that to be either definer or invoker. And by definer, it means who created the, the, the stored procedure, uh, and invoker is who is it running as. So definer is kind of like a set UID. So when it runs, it runs as the person who owns it. Uh, whereas invoker, it's normal process, it's running as the person that's running it. Uh, or the not necessarily person because it should be a system, but you know, you get what I'm saying. All right. Oops. MySQL dump has been around for a long time. It's rock solid. Doing regular backups with MySQL dump is, is good. It takes a while. Restoring from MySQL dump data can take a long time on a big... Uh, I had to drop a story because of time, but it just can take forever. However, even if you're not doing backups with MySQL dump of data, you might want to still get... Actually, I highly recommend still getting uh, using that for schema dumps. Uh, and if about uh, uh, runtime creation timestamps on your stored procedures, then also make sure you're getting the mysql.proc uh, table as well. We're system ends, we like timestamps, so I recommend it. Um, but you want to get your schema dumps, and the schema is uh, the information about the databases, the the uh, uh, and the columns that are in those tables. All right. Uh, Percona Extra Backup is a great tool. I don't have time to talk about it, uh, but if you're if you're finding the things I'm recommending aren't working, you might want to look into that. All right. So snapshots. This is the way that we re basically recommend doing uh, uh, backups at this point. If you're using virtual machines or containers, you can use the snapshots on those and grab that. If you're needing to do uh, um, backups from the operating system level, then you can put MySQL on a a snapshotable file system, uh, and then use a script to go through and do that. If your snapshotable file system happens to be LVM v2, uh, then you can use my LVM backup in order to, to get that. Um, but if you're using something else, it's really not that complex. You can you can create a, a shell script pretty quick and, and easy, uh, and probably use examples from my LVM2 or port that forward to it. Uh, if snapshots aren't available to you, like for instance, you have a large file system that you didn't leave room for snapshots, uh, then go go back and look at the Percona extra backup. Now log files, the, these are you know for sysadmins obviously really important. MySQL puts them in var log MySQL. The error log, if you're having trouble getting MySQL to start up, go through and go look at that. A slow query log. Uh, you can set how long a slow query log or how much time you have for that, but it will also log uh, queries that don't have indexes in, on them as well. So if you're having database performances, that's something to go look at uh, to figure out what is what is causing uh, a large load on your on your database. The general log is very verbose. I mean, talk about send mail style verbose, right? Uh, so you don't want to leave it on all the time, especially on a busy database. What it, you would normally do if you want to test something is is design your test, get it set up, turn on general log. You don't need to restart MySQL to do that. You can do that live. Turn on general log, run your test, make it for a short period of time. Then when you finish the test, turn general log back off and then go back through the logs. Uh, but don't leave those on uh, permanent. You will run a space in var log uh, if, you're, if you're using file system for logs. Now for querying data, we can use the tools we know. Yes, you can write stuff in SQL. I know SQL, there's just some things that are so much easier on the, on the command line. So we can build our own pipeline. 
with the tools that we're already familiar with. So said, grep, awk, et cetera. Here's a couple of examples. Uh, so here I've got, uh, I'm selecting album from music and I just pipe that out to grep and go look for, for things that have horse in them. Uh, the next one, I'm selecting out the username and host for people or for accounts that are allowed to talk to my database. And then I'm saying, show me the ones that are root but aren't coming from some version of local host. So I can see what root is being allowed to connect to remotely to my database. Uh, the next one is show my show replica status. It was called something else up until 8022. Um, and that will show me how my, my replicas are doing. If you've got data in a database, you want to have replicas of it so that if you have a problem with your primary, you can fail over to the replicas. Uh, so you also want to make sure that your replica isn't an hour behind because then you just lose an hour worth of data, which is you know a bad feature. Um, so this will show you some things, that, uh, your status, show you the last errors, and, uh, and how you're doing with your, your uh, uh, replicas. Uh, in addition, you, you've got, we've got lib read line available for, um, uh, so you can use either MySQL, or uh, you can use either VI or Emacs bindings for uh, your command line. For database things, doing things as a database, if you don't have a specific reason for something else, use an ODB. Just that's the thing to use for MySQL. Don't change the internal databases that are already there. Do whatever MySQL is doing with those by default. Um, also use per table. You don't have to use per table for NODB, but it is a pain to convert later on, which just means we don't like pain. We like easy, we like automation. Use per, just use per file per table and, and, uh, and be done with it. Um, and then for faster shutdowns, do some, some research on this, um, but this will try to get the cache down low so that, because uh, MySQL can't stop when you tell it to shut down, can't stop until uh, it's written out, out all the cache to disk so you don't lose data. So by using this ahead of time, ahead of your maintenance window, you can get quicker shutdowns uh, with MySQL. Uh, character sets. <laughs> this, was, this was a fun lesson uh, several times. Uh, always specify the character set when creating a database or table, um, or just get used to Swedish. Now, for the community, um, we have uh, uh, different com companies that are doing things. We've got the MySQL main branch that Oracle has, um, but also Procona and MariaDB. As somebody who's not really into it, they get along just fine. I'm certain we can find other examples, but my experience, they do, do well, they work well. As somebody using them for jobs and for consulting, I've used all three and, and the skills work from one, one to the other. Um, I will say that that competition, I think, has helped Oracle with the stewardship. And overall, Oracle's done a really good job. They've done a lot of, added a lot of features uh, to MySQL over the years. Uh, and I really, really appreciate what they've been doing. Um, but we have that competition and we have cooperative competition where they, they, if somebody, one group adds something, then another group can take that same feature and add it as well. We're free software. We're allowed to do that. All right. And... I think. Okay. Oops. Wrong button again. All right. Some resources. Uh, so there's a lot of different places to get MySQL. MySQL documentation is actually pretty good. Uh, Percona's My MySQL performance blog is awesome. Um, TokuDB, you might not have ever heard of it. And um, they, uh, but reading about that really taught me a lot about InnoDB if you're going that direction. And then I want to wrap up with a thank you to everybody for attending and everybody that is helping with this. Uh, and I want to thank so the organizers and the volunteers that are making LCA happen, the the database community that we have these awesome tools, uh, and of course uh, uh, my friend for OpenSSH. Uh, and then uh, finally, I want to thank Hugo Weaving uh, for I gotta I gotta read this I didn't I didn't memorize it uh, left it for for showing us the dangers of uh, a centralized virtual environment. Uh, saving us from the walled garden of Mordor and touring the outback of uh, Australia in style. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. The, that's it on. Uh, for the, thank you very much for the, the great talk. Um, I picked up a few things on MySQL, um, particularly being able to set a, a prompt actually inside MySQL would be extremely handy, mm -hmm. uh, keeping track of where we are. Um, if you send us our, your slides, we will put them up on the systemin.miniconf.org site and people are able to, able to grab them there. 
Um, I see there's been a little bit of discussion in the chat in Venulus. Um, so if you want to pop along there and um, answer any questions, that would be great. Thank okay. you very much for your talk. Thanks. Did it work? I, 